Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be getting the live stream going up in just a few moments here. In the meantime, bear in mind, this is a listener-supported broadcast. So if you like the show, give it a like. If you really like the show, give it a subscribe. If you just, just can't not love the show, make a donation at thevinnieeastwoodshow.com. And uh, without, as they say in Israel, further ado, here we go. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Vinnie Eastwood Show. The lighter side of genocide. Just because we're being exterminated doesn't mean we can't make it fun. Otherwise, what's the point of being killed? The Vinnie Eastwood Show, where the only thing worse than living in a high-tech global police state is Vinnie's jokes. Now today, ladies and gentlemen, we have a uh, uh, former uh, Scottish Wright, uh, Freemason, uh, James Wright, independent journalist from uh, Los Angeles on the show. And uh, of course, uh, this is uh, sponsored by uh, the New Zealand Public Party Reclaiming New Zealand for All the People. So uh, this is part of a web series where we're going to bring on uh, international experts of various topics around the world and uh, ask them to give their uh, first impressions, honestly, about the party and Billy TK and also what strategy and policy they might advise if New Zealand is to get itself out of the New World Order clutches. So, uh, James, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you, Vinny. Always good to be here. Huh. So, no, I uh, I had a look through that, yeah, and um, it's it's definitely good stuff. It's, it's exciting to read that, you know. So what, what about in, in first impressions and, th and things of that nature? What was it that excited you? Um, well, I think... Um, with my own sort of viewpoint as to what's going on here in America, like um, I've, I've been kind of saying this whole time that, you know, we need to perhaps reboot the government, or, you know, sort of dial things back to that either original operating system of the constitution as written or, you know, completely, do what it says when the part about toss it out and find something a little bit better. And I think that's precisely what you have done. Not you, the collective group has done um, with the New Zealand public party. It, it's, it's an idea I think that um, has been a long time in the making. Um, you know, I, I read something really disturbing as you know, I've been trying to uncover all of this um sort of hack and, and tech evidence um, about what's going on behind the scenes with the lockdown and social distancing and the, the real truths about this coronavirus epidemic. And um, one thing that I've noticed is um, this national disease uh, surveillance system or whatever that we have here in the U.S. and practically everywhere in the world Every, every country has signed up for this. Um, I noticed something interesting for Australia in that it said it was moved through, became law by royal assent. Well, the definition of royal assent means that a monarch had to have signed it into law. So when did Australia have a monarch sign that into law? Well, which royal family is relevant for... Australia. That would be the British. And I've also noticed that there's a lot of references in this um, technocratic deep dive into the, the code and everything making this possible. Um, a lot of references given to the uh, Royal Society. Um, the US aid is a direct benefactor of the royal family and sort of vice versa in like a money laundering situation. So, um, it seems to me that if you want to move forward with something that is for the people and, and of the people, by the people, then you cannot do it, um, one, with this, this British royal family still calling the shots as they do, whether people want to believe that or not, and then um, – the, the fact is they do. If I may it, back that up as well, uh, the Queen retains certain rights in the New Zealand Parliament, including rights to access to a Governor-General who can dissolve Parliament if he so chooses at the direction of the Queen. And indeed, this is the same as Canada, and Canada indeed, indeed, indeed did have their um, 
uh, Parliament dissolved by their Governor General after they were about to pass laws that the British family didn't want. So that's that's certainly the case here. Mm-hmm. Uh, but on top of that, it's more of a uh, a very hands-on approach, uh, whereby each member of Parliament, once you are elected, you immediately go under state intelligence services surveillance full time. And oh, this I... is to ensure that no parliamentarian can go out and do things that the Crown doesn't know about. And if they do know about it, they'll either let it happen or won't let it happen. Allegedly. Right. Right. Allegedly. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I think um, the solution, one of the solutions in, in that process, so your, your New Zealand People's Party, for example, you would want to make sure of, of a few things like one, for example, that you make sure that you move forward into a paradigm where secret societies such as Freemasons, etc., just really don't have a place <laughs> in a, a free and open society. <clears throat> I'm kind of um, paraphrasing a JFK quote there, but um, it, it, it's not possible to have that, which I know from having done it, once you get to 32, they sit there and throw this whole new oath at you where you've been looking like a good little patriot um, thus far, saying the Pledge of Allegiance, you know, and all that. But then you get to that level and it's, you know, okay, we're just going to throw all that out the window and you're going to take this oath here, which says that you are allegiant to the Scottish Rite form of government. And, um that becomes a problem, a problem that they warned about back in the 1800s when the Scottish Rite was taking a sort of a a hold here. And really the people that warned about it the most would be the Grand Lodge of Iowa. They even wrote about it as being, quote, evil and taking over. Um, But other, other Grand Lodges in America welcomed it. And Uh, that's sort of how they had the rebranding of that because at that time period, they were at the throes of a revolution here with the civil war and all of that. And people were very, very cognizant at the time of just how much Freemasonry as one example had led to many of the problems that were having uh, politically leading up to the civil war. And so there was a whole political party called the anti-Masonic party which formed out of that. It was formed by John Quincy Adams, as a matter of fact. And cousin of um, Samuel but, Adams and John Quincy yeah. Adams. John Quincy Adams was the uh, became the second president of the United States, didn't he? Uh yeah, yeah. He uh After I, Washington. I think he must have been um probably old age by the time he started uh this movement. But um the thing is is that a a, a private entity like that, first of all There should have been long ago clarification on this issue of are they or are they not a religion? Okay, they tell you, the public, that they are not. And yet they tell the members essentially that they are. They certainly are under their tax filing status of 501c3. That's another thing that has to stop. If if we move forward into an economy where it's stable and it's of the benefit of the people, then these private clubs, much like the Freemasons or say the Church of Scientology or uh, whatever, um, they can't keep enjoying this sort of tax shelter, just like corporations can't continue enjoying this sort of uh, tax haven and, and everything that they do. Because, I mean, right now in America, it's not so much that the state per se is <clears throat> coming to this tyrannical power. I mean, yes, they are. But at the same time, uh, many of the policies and everything that you see reflected here right now, they're corporate policies. They're, they're nothing that's been signed into some law or been approved by uh, some sort of democratic or lawful otherwise process. No, it's corporate policy. So if these corporations were rejecting this, then we wouldn't find ourselves in this situation so much so everywhere we go and put on this mask and and do this, do that, being told constantly, no, these are these are corporate policies you're hearing 
recited by employees who seems little do they know don't have much of a longevity left in their lifespan there at that company yet it hasn't occurred to them because soon they will uh, naturally be replaced by robots of whatever capacity they can because this is all about cutting overhead this is all about um making things so efficient that robots just kind of handle it all and in the documents that i've unearthed with the computer code trail of evidence I'm following. Uh, it seems to me that this re-education idea and getting people back to work, um, the only model that they have for that is to make you get re-educated and certified as this sort of um, Linux code tech geek level computer programmer. And if you don't have that skill set, or can't, or you're learning disabled to um, computer programming or whatever, um, then there's just not going to be a place for you in in this world with the current model and the current system in power. Um, so it's it, it's very very expedient for people to move forward with a society that these things that allow for the growth of secrecy and shadow intelligence, as you mentioned, um, intelligence is probably something that should have a public office to it in some way. Um, where that is to say that there's a, maybe like a civilian sector of it, you know, and yes, there's always going to be this, this, argument that you need to have on some level some kind of national security i suppose so but that's very 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 minimal like it, it doesn't have to be this behemoth that we've become uh, accustomed to thinking that it needs to be be from these people that want it from these people that have uh, a more top secret security clearance than the office of president itself so how can the American president ever hope to accomplish anything within this cabal network when the it's stacked against him or her from day one of ever taking any real decisive action without these uh, these rogue elements that are absolutely positively at the end of the day managed by a a secret society um, structure? Yes. So the. I would assume that a similar structure exists uh, here in New Zealand uh, and indeed all the Five Eyes networks. So the question is, what is the... Um, hmm, are we talking about a, a slash and burn policy here in terms of the bureaucracies? Because there's, there's uh, quite a significant chance that most of the bureaucracies have been uh, collectively infiltrated and would they need to be slashed and burned and built from the, the top back up? I mean, how do you find out who's uh, uh, on a secret uh, uh, program and who's not when they're working for a government agency that is above investigation? That's a, uh, that's a tall order. It is, and it's, it's difficult to say because you, you have to be careful here, I think, before you start making rash uh, generalizations that then therefore make you start to almost sound like the sort of perfect antithesis to what it is you're trying to overcome and get rid of, which is be a, a tyrannical globalist government. Um, so you want to be careful not to, to make it sound like, um, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna smoke all the masons out of their hidey holes and we're gonna, you know, <laughs> Get them out of the surface and then do a culling. No, 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 no. Because that's what they want to do. So you have to remove their ability to be secretive and be nefarious, which is remove this 501c3 tax haven and shelter from them to accumulate this massive amount of wealth and sit there and use it to do the darker traits of lobbying and uh, investing into all the wrong things. If you're going to unmask all this wealth as an organization and then invest it into a portfolio, invest it into one that's that's of good, 
that will do good. Don't sit there and invest into big defense and big pharma and big oil and all the usuals um, because that's not going to help anything. And it's certainly not going to help um, curtail this sort of global war machine, which, by the way, I think a, a lesson that everybody should take out of this whole yeah, situation, the lockdowns and, and <laughs> pandemic, yeah, or whatever, um, is that isn't it funny how quickly these world governments all of a sudden all just got along, all did the same thing at the same time without question or squabbling or bureaucratic bickering, and here we are. And they all seem – and I've, I've heard some people uh, suggest like, oh, well – uh, Vladimir Putin must not like it, and and Russia must not. no. J- 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 enough, enough, because we we keep ever since Gorbachev resigned. I remember as a kid, like it's been one minute. Russia is a threat. It's not a threat. It is a threat. It's not a threat. I guess right now we're back to it is status or something here, but it, it's a, it's a false argument. It's a fallacied argument. Um, the truth is, is that these nations of the world don't have problems with each other. Human beings don't wake up in the morning and endeavor to plot to harm other human beings. It's evil humans who have come into power who wake up and decide to do these things. Maybe not at first, but to secure their policies and to secure their wealth and their power once they start accumulating it. Absolutely. They get carried away. And when there's no one watchdogging that or, or, or trying to stop it, (laughs) um, and you start believing their crap and believing what the mainstream media has become the state media ever since the sixties, again, around the JFK time, Brown project, mockingbird, um, that's when the CIA went around basically to every editor, proprietor of a, a newspaper, a radio station, or a television station, my family included, and put a gun to their head and said, you're going to give us, the CIA, a, a set of keys to the building, and you're not going to question at all when we come in here or what we do. Like, say, rewrite an entire article <laughs> or, or whatever. So um, that has to stop. And, and intelligence is something that can be good, but it has to be um, managed in a good and in a, a group consensus, kind of like a maybe, say, a round table uh, type of way. I was thinking uh, of the conversation I had with Jeffrey Matt on um, Thursday last week, and he said that the changes to how corporate tax law and things of that work will actually make far more difference uh, than uh, most other kinds of policies. And you've touched upon the same thing, that they have a sort of a a religious tax exemption uh, kind of thing. Um, And it Mm -hmm. reminds me of uh, Jaws, where they say that there's two uh, options here. You are either going to kill this animal, or you are going to cut off its food supply. And uh, I think, ladies and gentlemen, let's get the uh, let's get the swimmers out of the beaches and uh, and cut off their food supply. If you change the corporate laws just like that and and uh, take away their uh, tax exempt status, they'll have to start making money like the rest of us, honestly. And because they can't do that, they'll collapse like a house of cards. Yes, I would agree with that. Um, <clears throat> one of my favorite shows uh you know that in recent years that's been filmed at all is that show um of leah rimini's where she exposes scientology pretty much better than anyone ever has and um i know that with that she's definitely um made a lot of of you know uh, battles won and, and uh, ground covered and everything in her endeavor with that. But at the end of the day, the Scientologists are still sitting pretty over in Hollywood <laughs> on the other side of the hill here. And um, <clears throat> they don't seem to be that affected other than some negative fallout in their PR. Much the same as, as me and my uh, history with the Masons. Yeah, they're, they've they've taken a hit with public relations because of me, but they're still around. 
um, interestingly here in California, under normal circumstances, when things aren't under lockdown and everything, um, and you're down at Hollywood and Highland on the, the Boulevard walk of fame, um, that you have all these booths and kiosks and everything, and your, your sort of new agey religions and everything are usually down there with, a a booth and handing out a book or this, you know, Scientology is always down there. Uh, the Masons of California actually have had up until this started um, a booth right next to the Scientologist. And in the Masonic Constitution, it's uh, famously uh, forbidden for them to recruit. And that is exactly what they are doing right now is recruiting. They're violating their own rules. So um, they're they're getting, I would say, desperate because the longer this goes on and the more um, – advanced technologically the world gets it, it seems like the more people find freemasonry irrelevant and perhaps that is the the final conclusion of the masonic system maybe it had a place in 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 time and space but that place has basically wore itself out of a, a point of it being and i think that's where it and a lot of things are the same could really be said for America and could I, Congress. Uh, could I just uh, add something on there? Because uh, as you've uh, explained to me once before, there's so many uh, levels and layers of Freemasonry, and that's essentially how the secrets get kept, because essentially yes. you're, you're imposing discipline upon the initiates. Now, in the future, you'll have technology to do all that. You can change people's brains, you can change people's thoughts, you can change people's moods and things like that, just using psychotronic weaponry in and of itself. So there wouldn't be any need for secret society societies or anything like that because if you wanted somebody to do something to you without them knowing it you could just flip a switch and get the and get a 5g signal right into their brain to make them do it all right and so yeah so what if uh those people who are sitting in secret societies right now rubbing their hands together about the future power that they're going to have over other human beings and things of that nature is actually just going to have the rug pulled out from under them just like the rest of the slaves yeah i think they're going to find out all too late that they are not the end all be all top of the food chain. I, I think Masons like to live in this uh, sort of delusional bubble that that they are, and no, they're just they're simply not. And in this technocratic hell that we have unfolding around us, I don't think there's much room for something as antiquated as Freemasonry because. Uh, when are you gonna when are you gonna have this? Be, because um, if we're all and I hate this phrase socially distanced, right? Okay, then you can't meet in a lodge room and you can't communicate these mystery school um, mouth to ear oral tradition things anymore. That means it's gonna have to be what a webinar, uh, a web open lodge i know that these men are never going to approve that because they're they're going to cling to that you know secrecy so much as the ship sinks that um there you have it freemasonry is the john jacob astor of the titanic sinking in this in this metaphor you know uh along with uh, every religion Right, so uh, the, satanic, much. the satanic New World Order wants to get rid of uh, secret societies eventually and uh, and get rid of religions as well then, if that's the case. Uh, so that means that pretty much everybody who's even in on the agenda is also themselves being played. Uh, so this is, the, uh, this is the real difficulty. If the ordinary person, man on the street, has no idea that they're being played or to what level, and the people in the top levels of secret societies are also being played and they have no idea as to as to what level, this is a, a, a perfect system uh, to control because you're essentially be able to fashion the ignorant into anything you wish. 
Now, we've had some uh, comments in the chat room about uh, Billy TK and the uh, the sponsorship of the program. And as we say here, um, we've got the New Zealand Public Party trying to reclaim New Zealand for all the people. And uh, I just want to clear up a few things uh, for people. Just just uh, let me read this out, uh, James. I'm so sorry to uh, interrupt you. Yes, oh. Billy TK gave me a $1,000 donation for the wife's car, which was one quarter of the total cost Listeners donated the rest. I asked for it as a condition of helping out the party, and they had to pay it first before I'd help them in any way. I felt that the Legalised Cannabis Party and the Outdoors Party, while they used me, they didn't appreciate it and also refused to pay me for my help. So I didn't want to be messed around by yet another political party uh, while my wife and baby needed their own transport. In exchange, I'm helping NZPP for this month doing at maximum one show with Billy per week. Everything else I'm doing, including this uh, this episode, right here is of my own volition and I've got no script to follow just calling it like I see it and continuing to serve my listenership who represent 100% of my current income which I'm extremely grateful for I tried to ignore NZPP and Billy for a long time while I kept getting requests from my audience Michael Stace, the uh, secretary of the NZPP, rang me to see if uh, the Legalised Cannabis Party would join them or change their name and as I was the only member who picked up the phone I assured him the party would never do that he asked if I'd consider helping them, and I agreed on the condition that a donation be made for my wife. I've been helping in my own way ever since, and in particular, my idea is to get New Zealand and international experts on the show to give their honest opinions about the party for good or for ill, and to advise what policy and strategy they would like to see. Once this trial month is over, NZPP can, t- can decide what is next, but I'll always be exposing scumbaggery and helping give a platform to good people, just like I'm doing now just like I've been doing for a decade, just like I'll be doing till the day I die. I hope this clears it up. God defend New Zealand, Vinny Eastwood. So, nice. Am I, am I corrupt, ladies and gentlemen? No, because <laughs> I'd be doing this anyway. I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't doing it for absolutely nothing. And, and that's the, uh, that's the uh, long and the short of it, folks. If you're paranoid, stupid, that kind of thing, that explanation will just go right over your head and you won't believe a word that I'm saying. Go off and die somewhere, okay? Because we're trying to save this country. You're going to destroy it if you just keep doing what you're doing, which is not helping at all in any way. So I just wanted to, uh, yeah, get, the, get that out there and sort, sort of clear that up because we're, we're at the... Um, these are the last days of war, you know. I'm, I'm starting to think that worldwide, this might be our um, our last uh, free election in any of our countries uh, to a large degree. And unless some kind of third party just comes out of frickin' nowhere and takes 51 percent, there might not be to, uh, a tomorrow for any of us. That's my concern. A uh, very true and very valid of your concern. Um, I would maybe I'm being more pessimistic. <laughs> I don't. Uh have much faith that first of all our elections here in america have been completely valid and 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 let's say untampered with um for a while i mean i've i've always called out this sort of thing every election season that um if you don't take my word for it then take the word of burke's peerage who is the preeminent authority of genealogical matters over in London and they used to do this. Now I still do it as like a ha ha parlor trick or whatever. Um, you can predict the outcome of the U S election of president by calculating the genealogy of all the candidates and the one in the end who has the closest relationship cousin wise, you know, to, um, the Royal family to the queen is the one that gets it. And then what's the first act that every newly inaugurated uh, American president does? He goes over to the United Kingdom to bow to the queen. What is this? Well, I think most Americans <clears throat> might be a little shocked. You know, you you go to Washington, D.C., and you take the little tours of George Washington's house. and this. Okay, um, you can do those same tours over in London, and you see things like, that you don't read in the history books growing up here that George Washington died very happy, very wealthy, and very much so a a friend of the king in London, in the West End. 
his house is is still there on a tour. Um, you you have to understand that much of the reality we see around us is just simply not relevant. It, it's it's an, it's very much so an illusion. A lot of it. I'm not saying 100 percent of it, but we've definitely had the wool pulled over our eyes for a very long time. And that's the thing is you can't, first of all, an idea of having a monarchy has been irrelevant probably since about the dawn of the industrial age, because a monarchy really only has a point and only works when you're in a, a medieval times type of a a feudalistic society and, and everything. Okay. I can see a point for it. Um, but not anymore, just like I don't see a point for um, the U.S. Congress anymore. You know, it's uh, something that the House of Representatives, what were they there to do? To represent you, the average American who could not read or write, because back then at the founding of America, most Americans didn't have much above what we would consider about a second or a third grade level education. And so... Your representative went to Washington, read these things, came back and formed, informed his constituents, and then got their consensus. How do we feel here about this? And they would go back and vote as such. It's irrelevant now. It, we could we could move on to the stylings of a direct democracy, you know, something that with the technology and everything that we have, uh, use that in a constructive way to democratize processes around the globe for all the different nation states. And um, unfortunately, I, with going through all this computer code like I have been lately, which uh, I'm, I'm back not being able to post about on social media because I seem to live on these uh, Facebook bands and everything else, um, which whatever. So there, there is no more free speech. Yeah, we can just throw that out the window. Um, I... I'm so disgusted at Apple in particular because, you know, I was an Apple kid. My first computer when I was roughly kindergarten age was a Mac Plus, and I've had their stuff and their crap and merch uh, ever since. And um, Tim Cook has really, really, truly sold that place out. And is it even his fault? I mean, because Bill Gates has made public statements like on CBS a few years ago, right after Steve Jobs' death, that they um, grew up together. And all the, and it's like, well, what? And so, you know, uh, Bill Gates has been tried or indicted and found guilty with Microsoft before. Remember the Windows 95 thing and you couldn't uninstall Microsoft Internet Explorer and uh, Janet Reno and the Department of Justice through a wall-eyed fit because that was suppressing the little guy, in this case, Netscape Navigator, and they lost that, okay? Same thing all these years later. It's just instead of trying to give you this crappy, inferior product known as Microsoft Windows, now they're trying to give you a crappy, inferior product called a vaccine that you're going to have to re-up and buy again and again and again, just like a shitty copy of Windows. (laughs) And Apple, meanwhile, was like the good guy that you ran to all those years to get away from the the Gates-opoly system. And not anymore, because Apple, Google, Microsoft, IBM, they're all working in cahoots with with this, this stuff, because this is a technocratic, global uh, hack corporate sponsored state sponsored hacking of self to uh with these these mercenary hackers strewn about the internet why is bill gates so heavily invested in github now well i don't know that's a good question mr i hate open source all of his life he's now suddenly in love with open source no it's because they've they've decided that that's going to be their argument, their loophole in case they get into any hot water. If people start waking up and saying, I have a problem with this, they're going to say, oh, blah, 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 blah. We, we haven't been uh, hacking anything. We, we, we found it on the subway, like a bad Hollywood producer who steals your script, you know, and changes a few names and, and suddenly it's their show. Um, and you have 
little to no recourse depending on how powerful they are. This happens to, to writers in Hollywood every day. And um, now it's happening in the writing of computer software code where, where this catch-all excuse of we didn't do it, we didn't do it is going to be, you know, oh, well, I found it on GitHub. Right. And you've been reading leading it the, the whole time. For example, um, the post that just got me <clears throat> on my current Facebook ban was where I posted all the evidence that uh, all 50 states in America, all their governors, all of their local county health authority, whatever mayor contacts, their Twitter accounts are not being managed at all whatsoever by them right now. That that control has been assumed by the, the WHO. What does that mean? Well, it means a lot. It means that one, every single one of these these governors, mayors, what have you, county officials that have allowed that, just that one thing, are guilty of high treason. They have allowed a foreign power to come in and have their log on credentials and operate the information contained within their official government Twitter handles um, by an outside player. That is high treason. I don't know how much more simpler to to put it than that. So Gavin Newsom, governor of California, his Twitter account is being managed by automated scripts run off of false data inflated and pumped into it uh, by the WHO and, and CDC beneath them. And it's out of control. It's, it's insane. And I think it's important for people to realize another big way to stop this is to maybe say stop purchasing Apple and Google and Microsoft products for the foreseeable time. Just stick with what you've got. And you don't need to run out and have the latest iPhone. You don't need to run out and have the latest gadget that comes out next because that enables them to do what they're currently doing. And if they suddenly have a hiccup in their market of everybody needing to be on that techno teat, then maybe, maybe uh, they're their coordination and their efforts and their confidence for one thing, uh, will be curtailed massively because it is definitely, uh, a large portion of what we are witnessing right now. Uh, the responsibility falls on Silicon Valley. Absolutely. Silicon Valley is out of control in this equation. And when you, you, you examine some of this, this code or, or you listen to some of these, um, private webinars like that I've infiltrated, say like the one with um, the IBM people talking to their their advertisers, marketers of how to move forward with everything in these changes. You know, they they brag. They're, they're smug and they brag about how they've been tracking everybody through the weather channel, widgets on your phones all this time and ha 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 and you know all this and and you see a situation that I think the world has seen before. In, in modern history, where you had a, a group of scientists and, and engineers sitting around, patting themselves on the back, complimenting each other, such great innovators, geniuses like Oppenheimer uh, for inventing nukes, right? By the end of their lives, they were pretty sorry that they did, right? It's the same situation. And I think people need to stop being as open and receptive to the product that Silicon Valley is pushing on you, because in so doing, you have made society this this infant not weaned off of this information parent. And society is perfectly capable of managing itself, as we know with Linux, which is what is fueling all this. Um, that Bill Gates is trying to move in on that Apple's already, well, if you have a Mac, that's a Linux system. So you'd be surprised what that Mac can do. You just call, installing Homebrew and opening up the operating system to the rest of its uh, capabilities is, is all you do there. And then all of a sudden you've got um, 
I guess what is now Defense Department level uh, operating parameters in your own system to do what it is you think you might want to do or build or contribute to this technocratic lockdown, which is to say strings and strings of lies in automated processes, you know, where they, they sit here and they say, and I, and everything I'm saying, I have evidence to back and the screenshots and, and sources and everything that I have extracted from this, this wretched hive of villainy. I remember on the, the one time you hackers. sent me a, uh, a letter that the Scottish Rite sent you from the order of the Illuminati with the proper letterhead and everything. That was scary, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure what point they were trying to prove there. Um, other than we think we're so great and uh, we're going to get you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to, um, uh, read something because, uh, oftentimes we don't have a vision for the future. All the visions for the future that we see are either given to us by the globalists or the people exposing the globalists and what they're doing, or it's from Hollywood, which shows us what the globalist plans are in the first place. Right. And I'm working on a little bit of a um, thesis at the moment. And uh, one of the sections is about a vision for the future so that we can manifest it. Um, And it kind of, I'll just read a a small section of it here for you so that you kind of get the idea, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Neighborhoods organize themselves to ensure their independence with community gardens, alternative currencies, weekly street meetings, and neighborhood watch groups, ensuring food, economic, and physical independence. Every member of the neighborhood is involved in the decision-making process for their neighbourhood and it's all done in person to balance the need for interaction and technology use. Broader governance issues are dealt with via the D3, the Direct Digital Democracy voting app tied to the OSG, the Open Source Governance web platform. A secure login allows people to participate in the programme which is simple and easy to use. It has sections for the street community, city, region and country. Users can scroll through each of them to see what's happening, comment on legislation that is proposed, read other comments and vote them up or down and have laws changed in real time. The legislation is amended according to the most popular recommendations and then voted on. In the case of controversial national legislation, a BCIR, Binding Citizens Initiated Referenda, will be run and all members of the population will be encouraged to research and vote on the issue. The system ensured that the people who are interested get involved and directly help in the running of their communities but are unable to gain power over others and are incapable of receiving money directly for their contributions. Infrastructure and most services are maintained or improved by skilled volunteers and donations from the community, while family businesses and partnership cooperatives replace much of the need for larger corporations. In this future, one social standing and respect became directly tied to how much much time or resources one contributes to the benefit of all. Very nice. Um, yeah, and I think um, another thing that it's important for people to be cautious about, because um, that, that's the world I want to see too, is move forward into like this direct democracy type thing. But you'll have to be careful because um, – like the way that they're doing this hacking and the way that they plan on expanding this, this hacking and telehealth. Are you kidding? Um, (laughs) no, no. Um, it's going to be that, Oh, well the info, see, you're going to, you remember like lately, I would say the past few years of, of computer and, and device internet of things development, you've seen kind of a, a distancing from, um, hard drives and, storage that you hold in your hand everything's cloud 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 okay yeah and they've realized that that's a mistake and it's very very important to get you uh your own data storage back in their opinion because that way if you've got the information on you and then they are the creators of that encryption key then guess what they can come and go as they please because i don't know uh to those <clears throat> old enough to remember Napster and that whole thing that came to a head right around uh, graduating high school, about 2000. Um, it's that technology, that peer-to-peer technology that they are basing this future system of theirs right now off of. If I may, uh, also, peer-to-peer economy, ladies and gentlemen, how does this show run? 
peer-to-peer economy. Instead of me making a product and somebody coming and purchasing that product, the people who consume the product donate in advance and get to continue enjoying the product. So if you like this product, ladies and gentlemen, donate at the vinnieeastwoodshow.com. There's PayPal drop-down buttons. The PayPal email is gorillamedia77 at gmail.com. And if you are a Kiwi, you can use Kiwi Bank and set up an AP from as little as a dollar a week, a dollar a month. We have one uh, donor who gives us 300 New Zealand dollars a month into the Kiwi Bank and we have one US listener a wonderful man named Rick who sends us 300 US dollars in a, in a greeting card uh, every month as well to support the family ladies and gentlemen so whatever you can contribute please do think about that but you know don't don't starve yourself or, or deprive your children or something like that Vinny's not worth it but anyway uh, continue, continue <laughs> on James <laughs> um yeah it uh because in the in the current model um they want to see themselves as being the key masters you know those those who hold that encryption key over you and therefore are keeping you safe because remember this is all about keeping you safe bill gates and all these politicians and the queen and everybody just all love you and all want you so safe right no no they can't stand you and they couldn't wait to see you die quicker and if you think that them having a hold of your your encryption key in this system is going to be productive or something that benefits you you are sadly mistaken okay like because how are they going to handle it just call a spade a spade. Um, and you, Vinny, we've known each other almost a, a decade now, so you know that I'm not like a holy roller, but I calls them as I sees them. And um, you're talking about some real biblical, I think, um, Mark of the Beast type stuff unfolding here. That's where they intend on t- They're already talking about it, now, about it, implants. Uh, and We had... Um... Oh, this might be a little bit off topic, but we had uh, Rachel Vaughan uh, from Australia. She's a victim of a uh, Masonic pedophile cult down there. And uh, she claimed that when she was in these ritual rooms where they were sacrificing other children in front of her and torturing them, uh, these uh, people were trying to summon the old gods. Horus, Baphomet, Apollo, th- things, things like that. Gods from the ancient world. That was what they were actually trying to summon. And they were actually successful, according to her, that these dark, shadowy entities would come into this manifest reality and that all the people who actually summoned them were completely and utterly terrified of them. Almost as if they had to do what the entities told them to do in life in order to maintain their power and position. And if they ever turned against them, they would lose everything, including their lives. Yes, I I can say um, in my time spent inside of a Scottish Rite building from an administrative uh, level, there is absolutely positively a very elect, um, we'll call it the gifted and talented, I guess, uh, contingent of the membership as so self-appointed who absolutely positively do participate in rituals such as that. Um, for example, there's, n- it's not coincidence why, like in the grand ballroom of that building, there are 72 chandeliers hanging from the ceiling, okay? Because that is a reference to the 72 demons of the Goetia of Solomon, or rather the 72 jinn. J I N N, not you know, not like Aladdin and the genie and, and all that cute stuff that Disney uh, brainwashes everybody with. So yeah, um, that is something that they do at a higher level, seem to be invested in, which is seeking out um, the sort of, I think in their minds, the perfect marriage of high technology and high occult. Sciences, because after all, anything that is occult or or magical in nature is just really something that a, a phenomenon in which science has not progressed enough to have an explanation for. Um, much like how uh, a lot of people dismiss things like um, telekinesis, uh, telepathy, 
Um, and yet, um, if you dismiss that, that's interesting because our defense department certainly doesn't. I mean, have you seen the men who stare at goats and, and the remote viewing? But they don't call it remote viewing anymore. You see, we got to always change the names. Now it's sense making and uh, super normality and, and these these things. So um, it still goes on, and they're obviously heavily invested in it. If they were not invested in it to the way they are, there wouldn't be anything to see or to talk about or any substance there. And this would be dismissible. And oh, what a bunch of mumbo jumbo, hocus pocus. No, it's not. It's, it's very serious. And it's fueling these, these people who are so, in my opinion, stupid that at the end of the day, uh, they don't seem to understand that, um, the vast majority of them, I don't think are invited to the, the final table, as it were, that's going to be a very, very small amount of people. Yeah. And, and again, that's the, uh, the whole way of how you, uh, use tradecraft to keep secrets. Uh, now, uh, just before we, uh, jump off the show here, I've got one more thing to, uh, to read, uh, regarding Billy TK that I wrote yesterday. I'm, st- uh, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, I'm still investigating Billy. Am I totally sold on him? No, not yet. Um, James, maybe you're one of the only people I know that talks about this kind of stuff that I that I know for a fact is 100% genuine, but that's because we've known each other for 10 years and I've been there for you in your hardest times kind, kind of thing. So we've got that kind yes, of relationship. We've built that rapport. Uh, Billy, on the other hand, I'm, st- I'm still building that and uh, it's, it's very, very difficult for me to accept new friends and, and uh, uh, trusted colleagues into my circle. So I'll, I'll do it at my own pace, essentially. And so I just want to... Uh, remind people of that fact i'm still waiting for evidence that billy tk isn't genuine lots of people making accusations but not one shred of solid evidence that actually proves what they say it proves has been produced only guilt by association logical fallacies assumptions suppositions and outright lies have been offered up so far i've done the best i can to verify these claims but it appears to be the work of people who don't know how to verify facts don't know how to reason or simply refuse to. Facts don't care what we believe. Billy refused an all-expenses-paid trip to China. He's been banned from live-streaming on Facebook. He's having his business dry up due to his politics, and his family are having a real hard time too. Those things don't happen to New World Order plants, unless they've turned whistleblower, of course. Billy has come out publicly against China, Communists, uh, 1080 Poison, the United Nations, Satanic Pedophiles, Fluoride, Vaccines, 5G, Child Youth and Family Services, Child Kidnapping, Fractional Reserve Banking, Gun Confiscation, Agenda 2030, Family Unit Destruction, Carbon Taxes, COVID-19 Lockdowns, Freemasons and Secret Societies, Income Taxes, The Queen and Right of New Zealand, which is the corporate name of the entity known as New Zealand, ladies and gentlemen, Corporate Law, Mass Surveillance, Police and Government Monopoly on Force. I have never seen any politician take on all of these issues at the same time, nor speak about them with such authority and clear understanding as he does. Now, I'm still waiting for verified evidence, so send it through if you can find it, ladies and gentlemen. Good hunting. Yeah, yeah, that, uh, you know, and, and we've we've been in this game, you and I, now long enough that we've seen so many people come and go, and the the people who really were telling the truth or whatever, uh, how they've been sidelined and how they've struggled to keep afloat. And you see those traits always, always match up. And like this notion that we've been discussing, it's actually more controversial than some people may think. Because if you remember, uh, Vinny was right after I moved to Hollywood after I got the book deal and we just kind of, you know, and, um, we were talking late one night and we did that thing where we went on, uh, was it we are change.org. And we basically did sort of like the, the write up of a uh, petition to have, uh, Freemasonry declared, like, uh, what was it? I don't even remember all of it. it. It was, um, you know, to have it made, illegal or banned or or whatever audited something to that effect i think we were and, all emotional we were like let's ban all secret societies change.org yeah yeah 
It was something like that, but but what was interesting about that is we did that, and I think we finished it up at about like four in the morning or so Los Angeles time. Yeah, we were up and like, yeah. yeah, yeah, and by and we posted it, and by what eight a.m. it was gone from weird changed. So you know, this whole process, even for us, has been a pathway of discovery of just how controlled things are and just when you thought or one of us thought (laughs) it was controlled this much you know you find out suddenly oh no no it's that and it's a whole lot more and um that's that's what has to stop because it's sort of like a a a runaway uh down it's a snowball rolling downhill and it's just avalanching democracy down with it and it has to be stopped and a great deal of that uh rests on stopping silicon valley and this apparently under the orders and auspices of the british royal family globe and the british empire i'm because like you said the corporate name of new zealand i'll state the corporate name of america right now the virginia company google that it's important. You might want to know what that is, Americans. <laughs> the way that the Queen views this this whole nation as a corporation that the the president is just CEO of. Mm, mm. And if you don't believe that, ladies and gentlemen, go and Google the flag uh, for the uh, the East India Trading Company. Oh yeah, this is a good one. I like this. Vinny's about to prove a point. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the uh, that's the whole idea uh, as well. As so- sometimes, I remember I had a uh, a bit of a uh, problem with somebody, and they were like trying to verify facts or something like that. And uh, then I just realized that oh my god, I've got a smartphone. You can just pull things out now and just prove them right on the spot. You know, you don't have to. Know, I know. You don't have to know right? everything. You don't have to have all the documents on you anymore. This is great. It's useful. So, so just well, as you, an example, you don't have to. You don't have to use example. that thing either to, to monitor Kardashians. Yeah. So yeah. Americans who think that you, <laughs> your com- your country is not a company that is owned by the British Crown. This <laughs> is the this is the East India Company's flag. Okay, this is your company, ladies and gentlemen. Ta da! <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. that being said, uh, I, you know, I, I think um, I'd really like to have a conversation with um, Prince Harry for many reasons. We won't get into what all those reasons are right now and, and sully this discussion, but. Um, I, I think that there's definitely a proactive uh, role he could inspire others to take with um, his viewpoints on this. And I think a lot of right now uh, what he is dealing with and, and the media lambasting him and, and this sort of war he's fighting with them, it's the same thing that all of us deal with, uh, you, me, and, and the people that we work with, you know. Um, this, this lampooning of ideas and thoughts that, uh, go against the grain of what is the accepted crap in society that we, we are served every day. And that has to stop. It just, it needs to stop. It's gone too far. I think, uh, people are screaming. Uh, uh, all, all the time because they don't know what they're talking about and uh, they think that if they just yell the wrong thing loud enough it suddenly becomes real um, and that's just not the case so uh, ladies and gentlemen let's let's be a bit more reasonable shall we let's try to be the example of maturity that we want to be let's try okay just make an effort it doesn't take a, a hell of a lot um, but it is eventually going to cost you everything. So I'm not going to lie about that. So, <laughs> Well, no, Vinny, actually, on that note, I think it's important to also say, or I feel at least compelled to say to people, you know, please, I understand that there's probably a lot of ego in, in people's thought process of, you know, admitting that they've been duped or that they've been wrong about a leader or... Uh, a, a certain 
branch of government or whatever, all of it, anything in between, it doesn't matter that you've been wrong about something that you've um, been duped and, and conned by something. Not a lot of people easily and readily admit things like that because they feel it's a weakness or they look stupid or uh, clumsy or whatever. And no, no, it, it, it's, it's, there's nothing wrong with admitting um, I made a mistake in my judgment on blah, blah, or I made a mistake in allowing uh, this to become like this around me. Um, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. And it's important that people um, just, just get over these, these needs to look and feel all important it's because, because you're just not going to be able to in this world in this system that is rapidly building its walls around each and every one of you, invisible walls for a mental prison. That's another thing. Uh, uh, just to remind yourself of, ladies and gentlemen, is that this is in the end game now. Okay? Agenda 2030. But in, in 10 years, there's going to be so many changes if we aren't that change that you that that you won't be able to recover from okay uh and i think a good example of that is george orwell's uh concept of new speak all right now you know how the english language has all these incredible words that are very very descriptive and they they can make you feel something you know they're magic that's why they call it spelling new speak is meant to remove all of those words that truly mean something, all of those words that are really, truly powerful, all those descriptive words, particularly the ones that would enable you to describe what you're up against. Because if a population couldn't even describe their enemy, how would they ever be able to defeat it? So up your language intake, ladies and gentlemen. If you've got a short attention span, get a longer one, you're not going to be able to understand these concepts and digest them properly unless you have patience, and through that patience, you can gain wisdom. James Wright, uh, formerly of the Scottish Wright, uh, independent journalist uh, from Los Angeles, thank you so much for your time, brother. Thank you, Vinny. And uh, with that said, ladies and gentlemen, please donate to the VinnieEastwoodShow.com. That's Vinny with a Y because it's the most important question. And Eastwood, like, go ahead, make my news. If you are a New Zealander starting up an automatic Kiwi Bank, there were 12 automatic payments from, from my fellow Kiwis into the Kiwi Bank this morning, James. And I, I was just like, wow, the most we've ever gotten in a day was 10. And today we've, uh, we've broken a new record. So I really am uh, so super, super grateful. And you know what the problem is, ladies and gentlemen? I don't know how to be grateful enough. I, I'll never be able to pay back <laughs> what, you've, what you've given to me. All right. You pay that. You pay that back every day, Vinny. One you can really only, do. One can only hope I do. But I think it's just that uh, that Catholic guilt where my mum told me, "Here's an ice cream. Come to the Catholic church for an hour." And I sat there, didn't pay attention, and just kept thinking about the ice cream. And then I ate the ice cream and felt guilty because I wasn't paying any attention. I don't know what it is. It's 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 it's, it's a weird thing. I, I find <laughs> it very difficult to be grateful, and I find it di- very difficult uh, to take compliments and things of that nature. It's just every now and again, ladies and gentlemen, you do something that really surprises surprises me and uh, really makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside and I just want to thank you for that so uh, with that again ladies and gentlemen in the description there's all the links to donate to the show uh, please give this video a like right now if you can please ladies and gentlemen we've got a bunch of people watching right now please give this video a like and uh, please share it around subscribe to the channel do everything that you need to to support this channel in any way that you can financially or otherwise because this is your platform ladies and gentlemen this is no joke there aren't any other live broadcasters in new zealand that are telling the truth to you on a daily basis with the exception of this show okay folks so if you like that if you want to see it continue then please support it as the vinnie eastwood show listeners have been for the last decade so there you go folks thank you very much for listening 
to the Vinny Eastwood show. <laughs> the lighter side of genocide. Just because we're being exterminated doesn't mean we can't make it fun. Otherwise, what's the point of being killed? The Vinny Eastwood show. Where the only thing worse than living in a high-tech global police state is Vinny's jokes. 